All right, good morning all. So you're joining me outside the observatory. Over the last few nights, uh, I've spent some time imaging NGC 7023, uh, which is the uh, Iris Nebula, uh, a reflection nebula uh, located around about 1300 light years away, and itself it had a diameter of around about six light years. The, the nebula is uh, illuminated by a nearby star, and uh, I've spent some time capturing data uh, over the last three nights and uh, let's see what we've got. But first up, let's head inside the observatory and uh, see what I've used to capture this target. So for imaging this target, uh, we're going to be using the Celestron uh, RASA, the 11 inch version. Uh, that's got a 620 millimeter focal length. And on the front of the RASA, obviously being an astrograph, uh, I have got a ZWO ASI uh, 2600 uh, one-shot colour camera. And sitting in front of the camera, I've got a ZWO filter drawer with a UV IR cut filter in there. And then. Under the scope, the guide scope I'll be using is the ZWO, it's actually a discontinued model now, but it's a 280mm guide scope, 60mm aperture, and connected to that I have got a ASI 120mm guide camera. Now unfortunately, as you can see, I've got a ST4 cable still connected to this camera. Uh, I had issues with the CGXL and PHD2 not uh, playing nicely and uh, I couldn't get it to calibrate and I haven't been back to try and resolve this yet. Uh, so in the meantime I've been using the ST4 cable and that's been working fine. Uh, for, for this particular session uh, my guiding was down to 0.6 arc seconds uh, which can't, uh, we can't really complain about. So the CGXL is the mount in use. and. On the uh, pier itself, so this is the new pier that I recently installed, the concrete pier, and I uh, did a video on that as well, I'll put a link up to it in the corner. And I've got a USB hub, I've also got a dew heater attached, although it's not in use at the moment, and uh, that's the, the equipment we'll be using. And over in the background you can see I've got the workstation set up, I'll be imaging the session with uh, Nina, and uh, that's the latest version 2 release candidate 4 and the guiding will be done by PHD2 and obviously the mount will be controlled with the, the CPWI software. So that's it. So now that that's done, let's uh, head inside uh, into my home office and uh, take a look at the images captured. So here we are in Stellarium inside and uh, I've got the Iris Nebula selected as the target and up on the top right hand side I've got the sensor set to my 2600 and the telescope set to the Celestron RASA 11. And here we are at the Iris Nebula just sitting in the constellation Cepheus. And the red box indicates the field of view uh, for the image train and the telescope. So if we zoom in, this is what we should expect to see uh, from a field of view with the Iris Nebula sitting in the center. Uh, and as I said earlier, this is 1300 light years away and has a diameter, uh, the illuminated section of around about uh, six light years. And uh, the illumination is caused uh, by a nearby star uh, in the area. All right, so after having set up uh, and identified my target, I uh, configured NIDA uh, for the sequence and did this over the course of three nights and it, after each night uh, I took a set of flats uh, for the image train uh, of that evening and then I took all the data uh, into uh, the main machine and uh, processed that through DSS. So let's take a look at that now. So before we actually processed uh, the Iris Nebula and stacked it, uh, I used the FITS viewer uh, that comes part of the ASI Studio uh, software and I went through each light frame and just checked uh, the quality. Uh, was there any you know, obvious issues? Has there been a bit of movement in the mount? Uh, anything like that that would say, yeah, that image is no use for stacking, and then just deleted that out of the equation. 
So for the three nights, uh, the first night I captured 155 subs and I reduced that down to 138. For the second night I did 108 subs and reduced that down to 82. And for the third night I took 171 subs and reduced it down to 163. So for these frames, uh, I then took it into Deep Sky Stacker and I processed it uh, using the auto adaptive weighted average method and this is the output from uh, DSS so I also set uh, Deep Sky Stacker to do only the top 75% of the frames I uh, had plenty of exposures to play with so I thought well I'll let it sort out what's good and what's bad as well and uh, uh, left it to select only the 75% uh, <coughs> of the, the frames. So after Deep Sky Stacker had done its thing, I uh, pulled the information or I pulled the final image into uh, Pixinsight. Uh, so let's open up Pixinsight now. So here we are in Pixinsight and uh, this is the autosave file that came out of DSS uh, before any stretch was applied. Uh, so if we apply a quick default screen transfer stretch, you can see what data uh, we've got to, to play with. So this was the starting point for all the image processing. So the next thing I did uh, after opening up the FITS file, I applied a background neutralization uh, to the image and that gave me this result. And then following that, we did the dynamic background extraction and this gave the this output and this was followed by the photometric color calibration and then I applied a, the noise exterminator uh, onto that image and this was followed up by a transfer from the uh, linear to non-linear stretch using the STF and the histogram transformation and then finally for this stage I, I took a copy of the image following the histogram transformation and I ran the Starnet 2 uh, to split the image into the two uh, component parts of the stars and the starless. So here is the result of uh, Starnet 2 pulling out the, the two uh, sets of the data. So then I took a copy of these again and I moved the starless version onto my workspace 2 and the stars version onto my workspace, uh, workspace 3 and then started to do some uh, tweaking on the starless. So if I head over to the workspace 2, so here we are in workspace 2 and here's the starless image copied across from the workspace 1 and the first thing I did to this was applied uh, some uh, denoise. So I saved the image out to um, a TIFF file and opened it in Topaz denoise and just put a very slight uh, hint of uh, denoising using the standard algorithm uh, in denoise and this gave me this result. I then took that image from denoise and took it into Topaz Sharpen AI and using the soft, softness algorithm, again, I just put a very, very slight, um, and, you know, it was barely uh, a noticeable difference at all, but it just sharpened up things just very, ever so slightly, particularly around uh, the likes of this uh, cloud structure here in the center of the core and a few minor areas around the edges of the cloud structures, the dust clouds. And, and that just helped to clean up things and I'm talking just a, an absolute fraction of a movement on the sliders uh, within uh, Topaz. So then I created a range mask which was this mask here and applied that to the image and this was to pull out uh, some more of the colour detail. Uh, so using this right range mask applied uh, to the image that came out of Sharpen AI I applied a very slight luminance change and a very slight colour saturation change and this gave me this uh, final view here. I then started to proceed to work on the starless element so I didn't do a lot to that so here we are over um, 
in workspace 3 and I'm using this I applied the easy star field sorry the easy uh, star reduction uh, tool uh, just to pull down uh, stars a little bit and then I applied a very slight uh, curves adjustment uh, on the saturation of the stars and just ease that back ever so slightly and then using pixel math I uh, combined uh, the starless and the stars field uh, back into uh, another image and this was the result from that pixel math combination I then took this final combined image and took it across onto workspace 4 so after taking the combined image uh, out of pixel math, which is the one we can see here, uh, I was really pleased with how uh, the image has, uh, has come out, it's nice, crisp and clean. And around the, uh, the large stars, I'm not seeing the, the usual big ringing and noticeable ringing uh, that I do uh, suffer from sometimes just with my bad processing. But this time it came out really clean. Uh, the stars have come out nice and crisp and the uh, reflection nebula area as well is also looking very clean and this dark cloud uh, areas and the various clouds around the nebula uh, are showing some nice definition in there so I was really happy with uh, how that had come out. So the only other tweak then I made to it was again uh, I pulled up the curves and sorry I didn't use the curves I used the color saturation tool and just put a very slight adjustment uh, on there. I think it was around uh, the red and blue regions. So that was the image that came out from that. After doing that, uh, I was quite pleased with the final result. Uh, and then after posting the, the picture on uh, the Discord uh, AstroBiscuit um, server, uh, Somebody made a comment that I hadn't really picked on, on during my imaging, but there was a very slight green tinge uh, through the image, uh, particularly down the left-hand corner. Uh, so I applied uh, the SCNR tool uh, onto the image a couple of times, and this uh, helped to uh, pull out some of that green contrast that was sitting particularly in the shadows uh, around this bottom left of the area and uh, this is the final image for that session so overall i was really pleased uh, with how this one come out uh, obviously three nights of data total integration time i think was nine hours and 45 minutes and that was using only the 75 percent of the total subs collected uh, after discarding uh, a number of frames uh, that i wasn't happy with so that's how this one's come out. Thank you very much. I will post the image at the end. And obviously, if you have any comments or further processing tips that you think I should apply or consider in the future, then please put them in the comments below. And of course, if you're a subscriber, thank you very much for continuing to support the channel. And if you're not yet a subscriber, then please consider do so. And it helps the channel to continue to grow and expand. And uh, I really do appreciate all the comments and the feedback and the interaction that I've been having with everybody, uh, whether it's doing uh, the image sessions like this or on the live streams when I've been doing uh, random star night hopping uh, or galaxy hopping uh, in the dome or even some of the, the live solar streams I've been doing. So thank you very much for your continued support. And I've got always, uh, please do reach out uh, in the comments and through the various social media channels. And uh, I'll leave the picture so clear skies everyone and until the next one. Thanks for watching.